course, you already have your explanation a while ago, but honestly, I'm really wondering, why is a copy of your affidavit of support found at the premises of Blocky South 99? Why would a POGO have a copy of your affidavit and to what interest do they have in your personal life? Mr. Chair, because my EA, who is studying in an aviation school, decided to temporarily take residence in the premises of um, whirlwind. That is the answer here, Mr. Thank Chair. you. And of course, it was also presented to the Senate, that which you deny also that the, there's a copy of the organizational chart of Black South 99 submitted to POGO, by to PAGCOR in your application, which states that Attorney Harry Rock is the legal head of Black South 99. And the same document was presented previously to the Senate. Mr. Chair, as Attorney Jeza Fernandez has stated, that is unverified and according to the rules of evidence, that is only a piece of paper until authenticated by a person who saw the document or by the person himself who prepared the document. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I also note that it was also mentioned a while ago that former Secretary Harry Roque facilitated the meeting with PAGCOR Chief Alejandro Tenko. And this was confirmed by PAGCOR Chief Alejandro Tenko uh, facilitated the meeting with Cassandra Ong, and Cassandra Ong is the representative, both of Hurlwind previously, and now the representative of Lucky South 99. Do you have any comments, Secretary? What is the question, Mr. Chair? There is no question, but if you wish to comment, I would let you comment. But if not, then I'll proceed. And it was mentioned, nabanggit po ni Pagcourt Chief, na nakiusap po kayo kung pwedeng bigyan ng pagkakato ng Lucky South 99 na mabayaran ng kailang arrears. It was uh, Cassandra who uh, did the talking. I merely accompanied her. And I accompanied uh, Cassandra as a person whom I know is from Whirlwind. At that point, I will stress that even PAGCOR acknowledged that on that specific date, the official representative of Lucky South to PAGCOR was Mr. Dennis Kunanan. For the record, Attorney Harry Roque, ulitin po natin ulit yung tanong, kayo po ba yung abogado ng POGO ng Lucky South 99? Hindi po, Mr. Chair. I have said it many, many times, and I will maintain that. And Thank assuming, Arguendo, that I was or is, the question is, where is the crime? But I will not acknowledge a relationship that does not exist because according to the Code of uh, uh, Professional Responsibility for Lawyers, there must first be a meeting of the mind between the lawyer and the attorney to repose uh, trust and confidence on the lawyer to represent the client on legal matters. Maraming salamat po. And let's have some summary pieces of evidence we have. In addition to those that have already been mentioned, your affidavit of support in favor of Mr. Alberto Rodolfo Y. De La Serna, your former EA, is found at the premises of the Pogo Lucky South 99. Pogo Lucky South 99 organizational chart submitted to PAGCOR and it states that you are Lucky South 99's legal head. You went to PAG, you facilitated the meeting of Lucky South 99 with the PAGCOR chief, Tenko, and you were with Cassandra Ong and requested for Lucky South 99 extension of payment of its arrears. And yet, Secretary Roque, you deny to be a lawyer of Lucky South 99. I'm just wondering who are you trying to fool? We are not actually born yesterday, Secretary. Sa tingin mo po ba kaya mong paikuti ng mga tao sa hearing na ito kasama ang sambayan ng Pilipino? Of course, deny as much as you want. But the overwhelming pieces of evidence point to one thing. An only reasonable person, any reasonable person, will come to an unmistakable conclusion. You are part, or perhaps a lawyer, of Pogo South 99. Mr. Chair, I resent that. I am not fooling anyone. I resent that also coming from someone who was my former law student and who uh, was my inaanak. That's not the way to treat a resource person of this house. At least when I was a member of this house, we never treated resource persons in that way. I resent that for the record, Mr. Chairman. May I ask the Honorable Member Kong Salo to refrain uh, in issuing statements that would uh, 
uh, insult our resource persons. Uh, I am not saying you are, but uh, try to avoid uh, issuing statements that would uh, um, hurt uh, the feelings of uh, our resource persons. Uh, please proceed. We'll do, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, in our last hearing on August 16, Friday in Pampanga, Secretary Roque was invited by the squad committee. And Attorney Harry Roque sent a letter dated August 13, 2024, addressed to the Honorable Chairman Robert Ace Barbers. Yours true? Are you the lead chairman? informing Chair Barbers that he will not be able to participate in the said meeting due to conflict with the previously scheduled court hearing before the Regional Trial Court of Manila on 16 August 2024, the same date of our Quad Committee hearing. I have here a copy of that particular letter. Mr. Chair, we have also in receipt here a copy of certification from Attorney Jennifer H. De La Cruz, Buendia. Clerk of Court and ex officio Sheriff of Manila, RTC Manila, is stating that Attorney Harry Roque has no hearing on August 16 and did not appear in the courts of Manila on said date. Mr. Chair, I hate to say it, but clearly, Attorney Harry Roque, our former secretary and my former professor, law professor, lied to this committee. And that amounts actually to disrespect on the members of the committee, which is contemptible under Section 11E of the Rules of the House of Representatives on inquiries in aid of legislation. I therefore move, Mr. Chair, that Attorney Harry Roque be cited for contempt for disrespecting the members of this committee when he lied, to evade, when he lied in order to evade attending the hearing of this committee where he was invited. So move, Mr. Chair. I did not quite hear what you said, uh, Congressman Salo. Can you please repeat? Are you moving for the uh, for the committee to cite Mr. Attorney Harry Roque in contempt? Yes, Mr. Chair. Pursuant to Section 11E of the Rules of the House of Representatives in aid of legislation. Mr. So, Chair. Mr. Chair. Um, one minute suspension. Uh,
Hearing is resumed. Mr. Chairman. Uh, before I uh, recognize you, uh, Congressman Fernandez, allow the chair first to determine the parliamentary status. The parliamentary status uh, is that there was a motion by Congressman Ron Salo to cite uh, our resource person, Attorney Harry Roque, in contempt for lying uh, before this committee when uh, as his, uh, when when he was invited in August 16 when the quadcom had its first public hearing and uh, according to that letter he stated that he cannot attend for the reason that he has a hearing uh, in an RTC in the city of Manila Congressman Ron Salo uh, uh, read the certification issued by the clerk of court of uh, the RTC Manila which states that the hearing where uh, attorney Harry Roque is a counsel was scheduled in August 15 and not August 16 and uh, in August 16 there was a certification from the same clerk of court saying that Harry Roque has no uh, hearing in any of the RTC of the city of Manila. That is the, the parliamentary status, uh, Your Honors, and there is a pending motion by Congressman Ron Salo to cite uh, Attorney Harry Roque in contempt for lying before this committee when he uh, submitted an excuse to his being absent in our hearing uh, last August 16. Now, pursuant to our rules, Section 11 of the Rules of Procedure Governing Inquiries in Aid of Legislation, it says that the committee may punish any person for contempt by a vote of two-thirds of the members present, there being a quorum. The following shall be the grounds for citing any person in contempt. In this case, uh, as uh, stated by Congressman Salo, the reason for the, con or the contemptible act uh, committed by our resource person is in paragraph E, which uh, reads, acting in a disrespectful manner towards any member of the committee or any misbehavior in the presence of the committee. So, may I solicit uh, comments from our members before we rule on this motion? In the spirit of fairness, uh, because uh, the committee has been uh, citing uh, uh, our resource persons who have violated this rule in contempt and detaining them before uh, detaining them in the premises of the House of Res Representatives. Would there be any comment from our members, Mr. Chair? Before we vote, Chair Malabante, the, before we vote of the contempt, we would like to hear first the explanation of uh, uh, the, the reason behind uh, his absence uh, to this committee last year. Thank you, Your Honor. I was hoping to be given an opportunity to be heard. It was an honest mistake, Your Honor. I have also been a member of this uh, chamber. We don't hold hearings on Fridays. So when I saw the notice of hearing, I assumed that just like the first and the second hearing where I attended, that it would be on a Thursday. And that is true, that I had a hearing both in the morning and in the afternoon. And that is why I sent that letter. By the time I realized that it was a Friday and there was in fact a hearing, it was also close already to lunchtime and the hearing was in Pampanga. So I apologize for the honest mistake, but the truth of the matter is I have been here on Thursdays to two hearings already and I just assumed that just like in the past where we don't hold hearings on a Friday that the hearing would be on a Thursday as in fact today is also a Thursday 
So it was an, an instance of, okay, there's a hearing, it's on Thursday again, and I have a hearing on Thursday, that's why I sent the letter right away, not even realizing that 16 is a Friday. That was an honest mistake. Had I had any intentions not to appear, I would not have appeared today as well. But in the first two instances, and those were the two instances where I was invited, I in fact appeared. I have no wish to disrespect the very same body of which I was a part of, which I consider at some point in time as my happy place, in fact, the House of Representatives. Thank you, Your Honors. Any other member who wish to make a comment? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, can we have Congressman a copy? Congressman Fernandez. Can we have a copy of that certification that was uh, issued by the uh, Regional Trial Court? Because uh, I haven't seen the copy yet. And that's the reason why medyo kanina I was... Uh, a bit shock about it. So, here. So, while uh, Congressman Fernandez is still reading the certification, Mr. Congressman Chair, Mr. Chair, Abante. Uh, I'd like to ask the Secretary Roque, what is the reason for your apology? Well, uh, it was really an honest mistake, uh, Your So you were apologizing not for your absence, but for an honest mistake? It was an honest mistake, uh, Your Honor, because I've been here every Thursday, and as a former member of this uh, chamber, as a former employee of this chamber, I know that in the regular course of business, we don't really have hearings on Fridays. In fact, even if you call the trunk line of the House of Representatives on a Friday, no one will answer. Um, that has always been the uh, policy, no? Um, so when I saw the notice of hearing, I really thought it was also on a Thursday, like the first two hearings where I attended. That is why I apologize for the honest mistake. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Congressman Akov, and then Congressman Paduano, and then Congressman Fernandez. Congressman Akov, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Attorney Roque. Uh, Nag-assume po kayo na mali, di po ba? Nagkamali po. Kaya nga, yung assumption nyo mali. Opo, mali nga po yun. And therefore, pag nag-assume ka ng mali, you should be ready for the consequences. Hindi ba dapat ganun? Yes po, but uh, so, there was no intent to disrespect this chamber. I'm not chamber. asking whether you have the intent. Ang tinatanong ko lang po doon is, kung nag-assume po kayo ng mali, Hindi po ba dapat tanggapin ninyo yung consequences? I will of course accept the consequences, the decision of this body. But uh, uh, since I was given an opportunity to be heard, I thought that there should be allowance for honest mistakes. Kasi, uh, pagpasensya mo na ako. Kasi ako, I know that you, are, you have been practicing as a lawyer for a long time. Hindi po ba? Yes, uh, Your Honor. And as a practicing lawyer, lahat po ng schedule ninyo nakalagay. Uh, for example, for the week, kung ano ang hearing mo for the week, ano yung appointment mo, nakalagay po. Di po ba? Totoo po yun. Uh, kaya nga po, dun sa certificate, talaga may hearing po ako ng Thursday. And mali nga lang po yung assumption ko na yung sumunod na hearing ay hindi na pala Thursday dahil so, puro Thursday po tayo. Ang ibig nyo pong sabihin, wala sa schedule ninyo yung dapat... Umatend kayo ng hearing sa Friday, noong Friday? Yun nga po, nailagay ko po siya ng Thursday kasi every Thursday po yung hearing natin. Then, uh, as it is, kayo po lahat ang may kasalanan. Wala. Opo, pero Ang wala participation ng iba. Opo, pero wala naman pong intention to disrespect the Ay, chamber. Hindi ko po pinag-question yung intention nyo. Ang pinag-question ko lang, as a practicing lawyer, ang alam ko, yung mga lawyers, meron silang sinusulatan lahat ng kanilang mga schedule. In your case, kung nakalagay yung schedule na yun, dun sa, uh, yung uh, event na yun, sa yung uh, book of schedules, dapat alam ninyo. Sa totoo nga lang po, dahil akala ko Thursday, nakita ko na na morning afternoon ng hearing ko, sumulat na ako kaagad to inform the committee as soon as possible dahil ang buong akala ko po talaga Thursday. Ah, uh, Tony Roque, marami na pong nama, uh, namatay dahil sa maling akala. Uh, kindly bear that in mind. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you, uh, Congressman Akop. Congressman Paduano, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyway, uh, tama po yung sinabi ni Chairman Akop na that's your fault and you should face the consequences, di ba? Now, eto lang po, kaya ako, of course, the intent, hindi pwede natin pag-usapan dito yung intent. Kasi, the question is, ay, ito, well, in fact, you're calling the chairman of this committee. Well, in fact, you text me with regards to your request for your wife to be excused in today's hearing. Now, as you mentioned, nalaman mo na after lunch, nag-hearing sa Pampanga. Di ba? At the very least, man lang, sana you texted me, you call me, or you call the chairman na hindi po ako makarating dyan kasi nagkamali ako. But you never do it. Kaya, kaya yung question of intent, yung question of intent, eh, sabi ko nga, hindi pwede magiging basis for that uh, possible uh, contempt, no? Na minove ni Congressman Ronsalo. Kaya ako, ang ano ko lang dito is uh, supposedly, at the very least, again, you have texted or called us, if not me, you called uh, Chairman Abante, well, in fact, on that request, you called Chairman Barbers, eh, but you never do it. So, ako, Mr. Chairman, I still, I joined the motion of uh, Congress, the first motion of Congressman Salo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Congressman Paduano. Uh, Mr. Congressman Chair. Congressman Fernandez. Uh, Congressman Abante. Mr. Chair, um, the fact that uh, uh, Secretary Roque appeared with us today uh, and apologized to the committee at sinabi po ni Congressman Akop kung nagkamali siya, eh sinabi naman po nagkamali siya, I'd like to ask that we hold in abeyance the motion until such time that all of us would jointly, would jointly actually uh, join the motion of Congressman Salo. Also, I'd like to open this debate to end any member of the committee to say something about this, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chair. Congressman Abante. Uh, Congressman uh, Joel Chua, uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, gusto ko lang pong tanongin si Attorney Harry Roque. Nung sabi po ninyo kanina, it was just a, uh, an honest mistake, tama po ba? Dahil sabi po ninyo, ang akala ninyo is Thursday. So nung Thursday po ba, nagpadala kayo agad ng notice sa amin? Or at the very least, nag-inform po kayo agad? Tuesday po, pinadala ko po. Dahil Tuesday. nakita ko conflict na po sa calendar. Tuesday. Tuesday. So na-realize lang ninyo na, na Friday pala, nung Friday na po at nabalitaan ko na nag, uh, nagko-quad hearing po sa uh, Pampanga. Pero yung quad hearing, parang umaga pa lang po yata. May quad hearing na eh. Tama po ba? Correct po. I took the day off because I was also not feeling well last Friday. So, no so, Friday po, masama ang pakiramdam ninyo? Yes po. Opo. So, ano pong ginawa ninyo nung Friday, nung na-realize ninyo? Wala po ba? Dati po, sabi po ninyo kanina, na iba po sa amin, may kasabay pa po ninyo. Wala po ba kayong kahit isa man lamang po na tinex o tinawagan? Well, kasi masama din po talaga ang aking pakiramdam. And in fact, I have a medical certificate today where the but, doctor recommended that I should be confined in a hospital. Pero I did not consider that because I said I have to appear now because I, I missed the last hearing. But uh, I have the medical certificate if um, your honors would uh, wish to see it. But my attendance here reaffirms my commitment to um, explain and answer all your queries because I have nothing to hide. Pero no Friday po ba, hindi po kayo na, na confined sa hospital? Hindi po. Nagpahinga lang po talaga ako Nagpahinga because uh, I had very strange uh, uh, feelings for the first time. It was, uh, it was uh, an electric feeling in the neck. 
and uh, I thought that uh, by just resting it will go away. Okay, so nung nalaman po ninyo na naghihiring na po yung quadcom, wala rin po kayong na-text o wala rin po kayong ginawa nung araw na yon. Oh, nagpahinga lang po ako nung araw na yon. Okay, thank you po. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Congressman Chua, uh, Congressman Fernandez, and then Congressman Alagano. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, I tend to believe the, uh, the statement of uh, the former Secretary uh, Roque, but uh, when I was uh, reading the uh, certification or the letter addressed to us, uh, I noticed that there was no branch number no regional trial court of Manila. Um, Secretary, is this uh, something that's, uh, that is uh, intentional or uh, you're trying to mislead us in order for us not to find out? Hindi po. Uh, the, the name of the case is uh, People versus Madriaga and uh, I appear as a private prosecutor. It is a case po for kidnapping uh, uh, but that is, with that, ransom. That was on, uh, on uh, August 15, 2024. Yun nga po eh, Thursday. So yun yeah. nga po yung na, naisip ko na Dahil Thursday po tayo nag, nag well, as I said, wala pong... And uh, also, uh, uh, hindi na ilagay yung branch number ng no, RTC. Po. Pero the certificate would, I think, attest that I was yeah, in but, the uh, RTC. Sa letter mo, wala yung uh, branch number. Uh -huh. Hindi ko po na ilagay yeah, na yan. Yun ang medyo, uh -huh. uh, you should have uh, written the branch number of the RTC. But uh -huh. nevertheless, um, uh, with your um, saying uh, his apology, uh, but... You should have sent a letter or communication to all of us. Um, we're just a phone away and uh, we will understand. But uh, personally, I will uh, leave it to the body to decide on the uh, motion of uh, Congressman uh, Ron Salon. Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Congressman Mr. Fernandez. Chair, can you list me to be recognized after... Okay. Uh, uh, Congressman Arugancha and then Congressman Paul Daza. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to ask the good secretary, um, as per your letter, at uh, inamin niyo po kanina na honest mistake ang supposed to be Thursday na akala mong hearing natin dito po sa Kongreso. At lagi niyo na po inuulit-ulit na you were once part of the Congress and Congress is part of the, like a second home to you before. Uh, basically, wala na question sa iyo dun sa sinasabi niyong this is part of your home or you're once part of the Congress and we know that. Um, ang quadcom po, Mr. Secretary, ay hindi lang po si invitation niyo siguro nakita. Definitely po, alam naman po siguro ninyo na meron pong hearing ng Friday kasi makikita niyo rin po naman po ito sa news, sa television, Mr. Secretary. Considering, Nakalimutan niyo po ng Thursday na meron po tayong hearing. Halimbawa, nagkamali kayo. Honest mistake. Hindi po ba dapat inalam ninyo kung ano ang naging come out o come up do sa hearing ng Thursday kung sakali halimbawa ang akala ninyo na merong hearing ng Thursday. Dapat po inalam ninyo na what happened sa hearing. Another thing, supposed to be Friday ang ating hearing, hindi niyo po ba inalam na yung Friday po, anong nangyari nung Thursday? And then nung Friday po, chinek niyo po ang calendar ninyo. Paano niyo po ba nareceive ang invitation, uh, Mr. Secretary? Sa email po. Sa email ko, nare-receive yan. And I receive voluminous email po talaga, no? Yeah. Mr. Secretary, sa talino niyo po, para pong katakataka na magkamali kayo simpleng schedule po ng araw, ng hearing na napakahusay niyo pong abogado? Well, nangyayari po talaga yon na uh, your honor, no? Dahil lang nakita ko ng committee on uh, public order, so sabi ko, may hearing na naman. So, may hearing na naman this Thursday. So, ang ginagawa ko nga po ngayon, eh, rinireserve ko na yung mga Thursdays ko and I was going to manifest in fact that on next Thursday I have an international arbitration and there I will submit the correct form already pero tinitignan ko na po talaga ang aking schedule dahil alam ko naman po matagal itong mga hearing na ito so kumbaga po sa korte we also set it ahead of time so binablock off ko po tinecheck ko na ako ano mga Thursdays na meron yeah. pong appointment another thing po um, sabi niyo po kanina Nung nagtatanong po si Honorable Chua sa inyo na you have already a ready 
medical certificate from your doctor na nagpapatunay na kayo ay hindi fit ang inyong pangangatawan. Para po na pang napaka-ironic na may ready na po kayo agad na medical certificate sa pag-attend yun ng hearing na kung halimbawa na hindi kayo talaga okay at ina-attest ng inyong doktor, hindi kayo dapat nakarating which is sinasabi nyo na dahil gusto nyo maka ipaliwanag ang sa inyo, maging totoo sa committee na to, umaten pa rin kay despite may advice po ng inyong doktor. Para sa akin po, parang pinaghandaan nyo na po na kung sakaling kayo ay magkaproblema dito sa hearing na to, may ready kayong medical certificate na ipapakita sa committee na kung sakali ay kayo excuse halimbawa sa ganitong klaseng pag-uusap ng contempt, Mr. Secretary. Your Honor, hindi naman po ganon. Kung hindi, nag-persist po yung aking kondisyon. And I don't feel uh, uh, I'm on tip-top shape now. So, kaya po ako nagkonsulta talaga sa doktor din. And the advice of the doctor is, hindi, ka na, pa, hindi na kita papauwiin because in the first place, napakabilis na iyong heartbeat and you already have a heart stent, no? Baka ka mag-collapse dyan sa house as you appear. But I explained that my wife already, who is also invited, cannot attend, so I have to go. And what I'm doing is, is I'm just managing. She gave me volume <laughs> para hindi daw ako ma-aggravate. But uh, she did stress na baka ma'am niya eh, tumumba ka na lang dyan sa hearing na yan. But I think it's very important that uh, I appear today dahil uh, I've already asked members of the committee to excuse my wife. And um, the least I can do is to appear despite the medical advice not to do so and to be confined. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, being part of this committee, Uh, for me, my personal, um, my personal observation regarding the honest mistake of the good secretary is really unbelievable. Considering na kung halimbawa na nakita niya na nagkamali siya during the first day na ina-assume niya na meron tayong hearing, dapat nakita na niya sa news yung hearing natin supposed to be na first day. Well, in fact, wala naman talagang hearing. Dapat nagtaka na siya na nagtanong siya at na-check niya ang kanyang calendar na ito pala'y Friday, Mr. Secretary. Parang sa akin po, napaka mababaw masyado yung pong kanyang dahilan, Mr. Chairman. Salamat po. Okay, thank you, uh, Congressman Arogancha. Uh, next is uh, Congressman Paul Daza. You're recognized. Uh, good afternoon to the four chairs of the committee, my colleagues in these various committees. Uh, good afternoon to our resource persons and thank you for being here with us the whole day. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to ask uh, the, our former colleague, uh, Secretary Roque, uh, in the last Congress, has he ever participated as a resource person in the last Congress? Not in the last Congress, po. Okay. In this Congress, how many times have you been invited and how many times have you appeared? Um, well, I was invited for the two times I was here. I was absent for the third and I was invited for today. So this is my fourth invitation. Uh, and, you, and you've appeared, uh, Mr. Chair, how many times in those four invitations? Three times, Your Three Honor. times. And um, out of respect for our colleague, um, I've attended many hearings, Mr. Chair. In fact, just yesterday, we, we suspended a budget briefing because a secretary had said that he was sick. Uh, secretary Roque is an intelligent person. He could have actually put in his letter uh, he was sick. He could have put in there uh, he had a hearing and not put Manila. My point of view is the other way, and we could have never checked. But I think it was good faith. He actually put where the hearing was, and I'm sure he knew that could have been checked. So I'm more inclined to believe that it was an honest mistake, considering that he's here, he's appeared multiple times, and I think the biggest issues are the substance of his various resolutions. It would be counterproductive, I think, uh, to cite him in contempt, and whatever sanction that will be, my understanding is, you would be holding him, but at, on the same token, I'm more inclined to maybe appeal to the uh, movement 
to Congressman Salo, instead of contempt, but some sort of a reprimand. A reprimand for that mistake which he admitted and uh, admitted in public. I think that that weighs quite a bit. And I'd really like to move forward to the substantive issues. And I think uh, Secretary Rocky will contribute more being here uh, than citing in contempt, which I believe will be uh, some sort of, uh, uh, well, actually, that's my question, uh, Mr. Chair. If if the resource person cited in contempt, what's, what does that really mean? Would that be, wouldn't that be counterproductive? Because I'm assuming we're going to have more, we're going to continue the hearing today. Uh, to respond to your uh, query, uh, Congressman Daza, it is uh, pursuant to our rules on Section 11 of uh, rules uh, of procedure governing inquiries in aid of legislation clearly states that there are several violations that a resource person may commit uh, before this committee. And if uh, these violations have been committed by any resource person, then a member can move for the committee to cite the resource person in contempt by a two-thirds vote consisting of a quorum. So, in this case, uh, as clearly stated by Congressman Ron Salo, uh, the violation as uh, stated in paragraph E of section 11, uh, which is uh, a contemptible act, uh, Your Honor. So that is yeah. the basis and that is the uh, reason why perhaps the movement has uh, moved to cite uh, our resource person in contempt. Yeah, yeah thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my question is, if, if the motion is carried, what would be the sanction um, Okay. for this situation? Well, uh, if uh, the contempt is uh, carried, what will happen is we will proceed to the next section, the section 12. Pursuant to section 12 of the same rules, uh, the section 12 titled penalties. So by a vote of two-thirds of the members present, there being a quorum, those cited under section 11 Paragraphs E and F shall be detained for a period not exceeding 10 days. That is what our rules say, uh, Your Honor. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, for the clarification, which I think strengthens my view uh, with the indulgence of uh, my colleague that that may be counterproductive when we have so many issues, national issues that we need to tackle and uh, this will just divert our focus for the more important issues. That's my opinion, Mr. Chair, and uh, I, I hope uh, my colleague will reconsider his uh, motion, and and maybe I could suggest, uh, maybe should he find it in his heart to do that, it's maybe just a motion to reprimand for, for the honest mistake that Secretary Roque committed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. But Thank you, Congressman uh, Daza. Uh, Congressman uh, Paduano. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to, ano, to add uh, dun po sa sagot ng Chairman natin, Chairman Barbers, uh, for the information of uh, Senior Deputy Minority Leader Paul Daza, under our rules, wala pong reprimand dun sa, ano, sa contempt. No? That's number one. Number two, if uh, the good congressman is wary that uh, Secretary Harry Roque cannot participate in the proceedings, he can. Because uh, those, those uh, resource persons cited in contempt can still participate in the hearing and in the succeeding hearings. So, kung ang agam-agam po ni SDML that uh, we cannot extract some more information, vital information from uh, former Secretary Roque, tuloy-tuloy po yung presence ni Secretary Roque, even today, until such time that this committee will suspend the hearing. Now, uh, second, Mr. Chairman, with due respect, with due respect 
to the position made by co-chair Abante. As the chairman has said, this committee should be fair to everyone. Well, in fact, kasi as I heard, the statement coming from co-chair Abante that uh, former Secretary Haroroki has already publicly apologized. But the same is true with all others resource person that was cited in contempt during the past and even as of today in the in the case of uh, Miss Baterna after she was cited in contempt nag appeal po siya and she apologized but of course she has violated our rules so yung contempt niya she's serving now and is now present in today's hearing. So, ako, Mr. Chairman, again, with due respect to the position of Co-Chair Abante, I still stand that uh, we, we, we should be, we should uh, base on our rules no? with regards to inquiry in aid of legislation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, may I move for one minute recess? Thank you, Congressman Paduano. One minute suspension. <coughs> Hearing is resumed. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, Chairman, may I be recognized, please? Yes, uh, Congressman Daza, you're recognized. Uh, thank you. I, I, I appreciate the comments of my uh, good friend, Chairman Karaps Paduano, earlier. And I understand that the uh, resource person can actually stay and participate even if they were held in contempt. But I'd like to emphasize to the committee that in, all, in every Congress I've participated in, many of the chairs in various committees always pride themselves in affording courtesy to former members. We do that as a matter of practice, as a matter of courtesy. And second, uh, I actually read the section, Mr. Chair, that you cited. And section 11, um, paragraph E, acting in a disrespectful manner towards any member uh, I have to be honest with all of you, I think the resource person was the exact opposite. He apologized for what he claims in an honest mistake. I wasn't disrespected, and I think most members here probably weren't. It would be stretching it to the limit 
to cite someone in contempt who apologized, made a mistake, is now showing up and participating. That's not being dis disrespectful, Mr. Chair. Anyway, having said that, uh, I, I respect the opinions of the others, and uh, again, I, I'd like to appeal to the, because the parliamentary status is there's a motion pending on the floor, and uh, I'm appealing to my colleague to find it in his heart and uh, to maybe find a solution to, to, his, to his motion. Congressman Paduano, uh, are you are you done, Congressman Daza? Okay, thank you, uh, Congressman uh, Paduano. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with due respect to the, with due respect to the manifestation of the good uh, HDML, uh, giving due respect to our my colleague, we give it them. Well, in fact, but of course, that will not be an excuse for a former member to be cited in contempt because, well, in fact, for the record. We have cited in contempt Governor Mamba, a former colleague in the House. At that time, he was the elected governor. So if that will be the case, Mr. Chairman, ang labas dito, nagpupili lang tayo nang pwede natin i-cite in contempt. Diba? And the, the, this, uh, kaya nga may, may Section 11 tayo to warn all those resource persons being invited to respect and answer truthfully the queries being raised by the members of this committee. Kaya wala tayong pinipili dito patos that just to be fair, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Congressman Paduano. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Congressman Abante. Before we take the vote, I would like to ask Attorney Roque, being a part of this Congress before, if he believes that this committee has all the power to contempt. Anybody else? That is recognized, Your Honor. If you recognize that, therefore, your public apology also include, include that you believe and realize that this committee has the right to order you in contempt. That is recognized, Your Honor. That's the only thing that I would like to say, Mr. Chair. That's the reason why I said, let us hold this in abeyance because I'm not objecting. I'm not objecting. I am just asking that we hold this in abeyance, all right? And that's the only reason why. I'm not objecting at all. If, for example, the uh, two-thirds of this uh, uh, Quad Committee would cite him in contempt, Mr. Chair, I would not in any way object, but I have given my manifestation. Thank you. Congressman Abante. Mr. Chair. Congressman Akop. I think the protocol is when there is a motion and properly seconded, no objection, I think the, the, uh, the chairman should rule. Now, if there is any objection, it will be subject to votation. So why don't we follow our rules? Thank you for that reminder, Congressman Akop. The reason uh, why when the motion was uh, made by uh, the movement, the chair immediately suspended the hearing so that we can confer among each other and, uh, and uh, uh, see whether uh, indeed a violation was committed before this committee and that violation is a contemptible act before the members of the committee. We do respect the opinion of uh, Congressman Paul Daza in saying that uh, it is the exact opposite uh, because uh, to most of the members of the committee, lying before this committee after you, you took an oath is a contemptible act in the committee. Therefore, uh, following as well the arguments uh, raised by other members, uh, the motion that uh, uh, we will decide is a motion to cite Attorney Harry Roque in contempt, which comes with it the penalty of a detention in the detention facility of the House of Representatives. Now, since there is already a motion, um, 
by uh, Congressman uh, Ron Salo, it is now the opinion of the chair, which I hope my co-chairs would likewise follow, to vote on the motion. Mr. Chair, before... Before we uh, we do the voting, um, okay, Congressman Fernandez, uh, we uh, recognize and appreciate uh, Attorney ha Harry Roques uh, being uh, apologetic, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, it took us so many uh, hours or maybe uh, minutes uh, to discuss uh, this motion that was um, moved by uh, Congressman uh, Salo, and um, we know for a fact that. Uh, he is really so apologetic about uh, about uh, to the issue that what, ha what had happened. But uh, unfortunately, uh, I still remember uh, the last time that we have discussed the issue of the SMNI, um, Celis and uh, Badoy was uh, cited in contempt. And um, Attorney Harry Rocky was so vocal about uh, attacking our institution and every members of this house. And uh, I wanted to ask uh, Secretary Roque before I, we render our uh, vote on this issue because as an institution, uh, Attorney, Ra Attorney Roque, uh, you maligned each and every member of this house by uh, telling that uh, we are all corrupt and uh, we are conniving with the DPWH. And a while ago, we were discussing about it. And uh, we are very hurtful of uh, what have you, you have said in that uh, video that we have seen. Um, as much as we wanted to uh, accept your apology, somehow behind, behind our minds and our hearts, uh, there is this something that lingers in our, in, in on all of us, that you are being apologetic in this committee, but somehow when you are outside of this committee, words, bad words are being thrown against all of us. So, uh, Attorney, Harry Rocky, uh, Attorney Harry Rocky, can you somehow tell us uh, why it, it is so that if you are here, you are being so nice with us, but if you are outside, it's the other way around. Can we have some comment, uh, Attorney Harry Rocky? Please. Your Honor, aside from the fact that I respect the institution where I came from, there is also proper decorum. So I have always maintained that uh, um, as a lawyer, I should be in top uh, behavior while in Congress. And that is why there's a substantial difference when you, one is in the exercise of freedom of speech outside and one, when one is before an institution like Congress. No? Um, well, thank you very much for contemplating, Your Honors, uh, uh, whether or not this, uh, this uh, committee will cite me in contempt. I will... Uh, of course, accept it because I have no choice. But, Your Honor, I would like us to um, emphasize that the uh, um, committee must abide with its own rules. No? And for now, I would like to make uh, a query to the four committee secretaries of the Quad if we, in fact, have a quorum as we take this vote. Because I think as a person who may or may not be detained, um, I need to ensure at least that the rules are followed, that there be a two-thirds vote of the body, there being a quorum, and I do not know what quorum is involved given that there, are, there is a quad committee now, and which is actually a first, a first uh, as far as legislative history is concerned, no, that uh, there are four committees. I'm just doing so, Your Honor, because uh, I leave my faith to you. But the, um, that faith should, of course, be in conformity with the rules. But thank you very much, uh, Your Honors. Yeah, Mr. Chair. My, my, my question, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Secretary, is that um, are you being truthful with all your uh, accusations against the institution and against all the congressmen when you deliver those, um, those uh, statements after the uh, contempt that was issued by all of us uh, with uh, Celis and Badoy? Your Honor, I represented, uh, I still represent uh, Celis and Badoy. And uh, I raised legal grounds against the uh, contempt. I said that there was no due process because uh, in jurisprudence, there must be a show cause order before uh, being cited in contempt. And I also said that the um, exercise of freedom of expression should not be deemed to be contemptible. 
especially under the facts of the Celis Badoy case, because they were raising an issue of public interest. So um, I do not know what uh, other matters uh, the good um, chair is uh, referring to, but uh, um, I certainly know how the institution works. Um, I respect the institution, but we all know that there are also abuses within the institution, no? which should not in any way affect the integrity itself of the institution, but certain practices will have to be condemned if, in fact, one sees them happening. Yeah, we understand you're kind of um, representing the SMNI, and uh, we understand as well that um, uh, of your freedom of uh, expression, but of course you have established also friends among the uh, members of this uh, house and uh, with that uh, collective uh, accusations against all of us that really uh, hurt a lot of members of this uh, 19th Congress. And uh, that's the reason maybe uh, we have a long uh, discussion about your predicament uh, because of that um, friendship that you have established in this Congress. But of course we have to follow our rules as what you have said a while ago that uh, there are certain rules that we have to follow. Um, painful lot as it may be, but uh, you, have a, you have a lot of friends in here, but we have to do our job. We hope you, you will understand that, uh, Secretary Roque. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm always guided by the fact that I'm probably one of the most heavily criticized personalities in this country. You know? And I have to take these criticisms in stride because of the importance of freedom of expression. And I would hope that uh, all public servants would take to heart the decision of this honorable court, of the honorable court, that public servants should not be onion skinned. But in any case, as part of um, my rights as a person who may or may not be cited in contempt, may I know, Mr. Chairs, if we have a quorum at least to determine if I should be cited in contempt. And this is a first because this is a first meeting involving four committees, so I do not know how the quorum will be determined. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Maybe, Mr. Chairman, uh, after this, uh, we will be uh, establishing if we have a quorum or that's or none. Mr. Uh, Chair. But for the meantime, um, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Attorney Harry Ra Roque, for that uh, reply. Mr. And I yield back to the Chairman. Mr. Okay, Chair, may I say um, something for a while before anything before, else? Before I acknowledge uh, Congressman Abante, let me just uh, reply to the query of uh, Attorney Harry Roque with respect to the quorum. Mr. Chair, he has no right. He has no right whatsoever to speak of the quorum, Mr. Chair. I, what I, I'm saying is, his right is to appeal. He has no right whatsoever to ask for a quorum. Mr. Chair. I absolutely agree with you, Congressman Abante, but uh, in response to the query of Attorney Harry Roque, kung ano yung quorum sa Quadcom, para lang malinaw, babasahin ko ang uh, ground rules that we all approved and adopted during the organizational meeting of the Quadcom. Quorum, the presence of a quorum in each of the committees concerned is necessary to conduct meetings of the joint committee. One-fifth of all the members of the committees concerned shall constitute a quorum. In the event that a member in one of committee is also a member of another committee or committees, the attendance of such members shall be counted in each committee to determine the presence of the quorum. So that is the res reply of the chair to the query of uh, Attorney Harry Roque. Now, Congressman Abante, please continue. Okay, uh, Attorney Roque, I'd like to remind you that I was the one that moved to contempt uh, Ms. Badoy, after which, uh, as uh, said by Congressman Fernandez, you have maligned this institution. Now, uh, I still maintain, I still maintain my position to hold in abeyance this contempt charges against you. But I cannot do anything, Attorney Roque, if this whole body right now will cite you in contempt. That's the only thing that I'd like to say. Thank you, Congressman Abante. Now we vote on the motion by Congressman Salo. May I ask Congressman Salo to please reiterate uh, the motion? 
Mr. Chair, allow me to reiterate my earlier motion. But considering that Secretary, former Secretary Attorney Harry Roque, has lied to this committee, that amounts to disrespect on the members of this committee, which is contemptible under Section 11E of the Rules of this House of Representatives on inquiries in aid of legislation. I therefore move, Mr. Chair, that he would be cited for contempt by this committee. Thank you. There is a motion to cite Attorney Harry Roque in contempt for violating Section 11, Paragraph E of the Rules of Procedure Governing Inquiries in Aid of Legislation of the House of Representatives. There is a quorum in each of the committees uh, composing the Quadcom. So may I ask the committee secretary to please record the vote of all the members in this uh, committee hearing. Mr. Um, Chair. Mr. Chair, just a clarificatory question, Mr. Chair, before we proceed on the voting. Mr. Chair, I was listening to the manifestation of Chairman Akop, and, uh, well, I agree with him. Uh, voting should be done if there is a outright objection to a motion raised. I believe the motion that was raised by Congressman Salo, Ron Salo, has not been objected to, Mr. Chair. Did you object? Uh, Can we get a clarification as to the position of uh, Congressman Paul Daza with respect to the motion of uh, Congressman Salo? Are you objecting, uh, Your uh, Honor? Well, I, I beg to disagree with my good friend, Chairman Akop. Uh, the chair had opened the floor for comments before uh, taking it to a vote. So uh, my position is the chair had already decided uh, to let people speak and then take it to a vote. Uh, oh, but I, 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 will, I will abide by your ruling, chair. Uh, should you take that position, but if you want to take it to a vote, I'm also willing to vote. So in that, case, in that case, if I may be allowed to explain, in that case, Mr. Chair, if the good gentleman from uh, the good uh, deputy minority leader accede to the fact that even the chair can decide, the chairman can decide whether to um, cite uh, Attorney Roque in contempt or not, then we will just simply uh, yield to the decision of the, uh, of the chairman chair. and no longer proceed with any voting, Mr. Chair, because under the rules, the only way we can proceed with the vote, Mr. Chair, if there's an objection, and since there's no objection, we relay. I mean, I agree with the. I agree with Congressman. The, Con the rules states that two thirds of the member uh, present must uh, agree to a motion in order that the motion will be approved and carried. Yes. So, in this case, the motion to cite Attorney Harry in contempt was properly. Uh, made by the movement, and uh, no objection was uh, uh, put forward, um, meaning it is a unanimous decision in accordance and in approval of the motion of Congressman Salo. So the motion is to cite him in contempt. So since, again, there was no objection made, by any of the member present, therefore, the the ruling of the chair and the members is that Attorney Harry Roque is now cited in contempt. Okay. So again, Mr. Chair, the Mr. Chair, just a quick uh, manifestation. Um, I will not be questioning your ruling. I'd just like to uh, register my vote as a no for that motion. So, isn't that a, an objection? Uh, yeah. Mr. Chair? Uh, okay, it's a vote. No, I just want yeah, to... Yeah, just for the clear. record. I, I, I didn't want to delay it any further. I could have objected and make everybody okay. vote. Thank you. But I wanted to give you that flexibility to immediately rule on it as requested and by Chairman Akop and uh, Kong okay. Jung. Thank you. But just for the record, I 
I, I would have said I uh, voted no for that motion. Thank you, Congressman Paul Daza. The motion of uh, Congressman Ron Salo to cite Attorney Harry Roque in contempt is now approved. Mr. Chair, can Mr. I move for reconsideration? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let us first uh, hear the member. Uh, the, the next, uh, the, <laughs> the rule clearly states that after uh, citing in contempt a resource person, a proper motion of the penalty must be open to the body. So is there any motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, can I move for a uh, few minutes suspension? Okay, one minute suspension. So the parliamentary status is that uh, our resource person, Attorney Harry Roque, was cited in contempt for violating Section 11, Paragraph E of our rules. And uh, after the, the contempt, uh, the next, the proper motion is to follow Section 12 which uh, speaks of the penalty. Uh, is there any motion? Congressman Salo. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, and to this honorable committee, in, consider in consideration of the fact that the resource person, former Secretary Harry Roque, is my former law professor, fellow Kabayan Party List representative, and a former member of this House of Representatives, and in consideration also of his claim for honest mistake and, of course, the apologies that he has given to this committee. And finally, in consideration personal relations, as he has mentioned a while ago that he was my Ninong, respectfully move, Mr. Chair, that the, max, the penalty be given be shortened to the barest minimum, which is just one day or 24 hours, Mr. Chair. Second the motion, Mr. Chair. There is a motion, motion duly seconded. Chair. To impose a penalty of 24 hours to the to our resource person, Attorney Harry Roque. Hearing no objection, the motion is carried. One, one minute Chair. suspension. Hearing is resumed. Congressman Abante. Mr. Chair, may I continue um, the interpolation here? And I would like to interpolate only uh, Ms. Paterna and Ms. Macarenas. Okay, before that, uh, Congressman Abante, uh, the ruling has been made on the contempt order of this committee to our resource person, Attorney Harry Roque, and uh, imposing a penalty of 24 hours detention in the detention facility of the House of Representatives. So after the committee hearing, may we ask uh, Attorney Harry, Harry Roque uh, to, at the, the LSB or the SA, the Sergeant at, Office of the Sergeant at Arms, to uh, assist Harry, uh, Attorney Harry Roque to his detention uh, center. Uh, thank Chair. you. Um, 
Congressman Abante, uh, are you going to ask questions yes, related uh, to connected the to the uh, personalities that were invited here?